Well, Tom, thank you for setting up the, uh, my part of the program. It's a pleasure to be with you. Uh, the idea of talking about sustainable solutions and Haiti in the same sentence um, is somewhat of a difficult topic. As you, if you know anything about that little country uh, just south of Disney World, down there an hour and a half south of Florida, there's not a whole lot of uh, sustainable things going on, at least that I know about. Tens of thousands of, uh, of attempts to do good, literally tens of thousands of uh, organizations all trying to make some kind of a difference. But to really talk about a, uh, a successful sustainable program or project, uh, they are few and far between. It is my hope this morning that I can share one of those with you that we've been involved in now for five years, almost five years since the earthquake. So if I can make my deal work here, there we go. The, um, as was mentioned, Heart to Heart uh, called Linda and me out of uh, our retirement uh, in 2010 to really work on the sustainability issue uh, that they were discovering in Haiti after the earthquake. You remember there were over a million people in tents depicted by this little slide, and how do you move from a situation like that into some kind of a sustainable operation. Personally, I moved to Haiti the first time in 1974, so that would be four decades ago. Spent uh, 12 years there. Interestingly enough, working with my denomination on sustainable solutions. Um, 40 years ago, we were talking about this. It's a long time. And yet, uh, to be quite honest, uh, even though we had some successes, some of them I'm very, very proud of, some of my dearest friends now, these uh, older, I don't know why they're all older now, but some of these Haitian friends of mine that I've known for 40 years, doing some really, really neat things, uh, coffee co-ops, etc. But uh, by and large, uh, I could spend most of my time talking about colossal failures uh, in terms of trying to find sustainability uh, options for Haiti. Partially, I've thought about it, of course, a lot. Part of it had to do, back in those years, especially with how do you work in a place where all the best and the brightest just have one major thing on their mind, and that's how to get out, how to go somewhere else. Uh, Venezuela oil fields, or uh, Europe, or, of course, the U.S., just anywhere but there. Cuba, the Dominican Republic, anywhere but there. So we struggled with that issue of uh, how do you find sustainability. Back to the earthquake. Uh, January 2.10, Heart to Heart uh, went there like they always do. It's a great organization. Uh, I love working with them. Uh, their mandate, quote, improving global health and expanding uh, access to health care uh, to those in need. And they did just that. We did just that the first six months after the earthquake. We uh, did what a lot of other groups were doing, in our case, uh, seeing over 100,000 patients, caring for the most marginalized of the victims of that earthquake, setting up clinics, uh, sending volunteers, about 500 the first six months, medical doctors, nurses, that kind of thing, and putting in over $40 million worth of uh, uh, medicines and supplies. But then back to the subject, sustainability. Haiti, like any poor place or poor person, is in need of hope, and without hope, there's absolutely no chance for success in any kinds of sustainability solutions. So into that, into that situation, we begin to search, and I would be amiss if I didn't mention this was all bathed in prayer. I have to stop there and tell you this, that I spent a long time learning personally about the necessity, the connection between praying for something and listening to God and then seeing the results. So what I'm going to share here, I truly believe this morning, would have never happened if we didn't have that prayer base under what we do, both in Haiti and here in the U.S. and around the world now. So into this solution, there we go, came um, these ideas. First, um, take a community, um, a local community. It could be anywhere, but perhaps best would be outside of Port-au-Prince, because normally we talk about Port-au-Prince as the Republic of Port-au-Prince, uh, three and a half million people, which is kind of one thing, and then the rest of the country, the other eight million outside, so outside the capital. So take one of those, any of those rural communities and begin to think about development. How do you develop it? Well, you develop it, that community. You start with, you have to start with local government. Um, and it's complicated. It's... Uh, uh, very Haitian. There is, for example, a, an elected committee of three, a communal section committee, if you will. 
and that's their title. And these Cossack people are charged with everything in their area, kind of almost like a committee of rural sheriffs, if you will, and they have a lot of authority, a lot of things to do, but yet they've never had their assignment clarified. And so one of the things we discovered early on is to talk with these Cossacks, these local uh, communal section leaders, about what they're responsible to do and how they could help in terms of developing the community was key. Below them or alongside of these communal uh, committees is an elected assembly from all across rural Haiti, these uh, Ossacks they're called, these assembly uh, non-paid elected representatives. Their number depends on population. So the Cossack and the Ossack, these two groups of people became critical in understanding how to work in a community in Haiti. Ignore them, uh, pretty well guarantee failure if you ignore this key part of the government. Now there's a higher level called mayors, and of course we all know what they are. In Haiti it's a little different, a French system. There's actually three mayors for each commune. There's 140 communes in Haiti, 570 communal sections. So we're talking really down here at this lower level of the communal section. So we gathered all those people together, those um, community uh, government leaders, and talked to them about an idea of sustainability. That was the first group. The second group was, believe it or not, even harder to deal with, and that is the religious leaders. And the reason I say it's hard is because there are three religions in Haiti, not two. What is the religion of Haiti, as the saying goes? 80% Roman Catholic, 20% Protestant, 100% Voodoo. Syncretism. It runs rampant. The average Haitian is, is trying to make sure he covers every which direction. So it's not uncommon to be in a, a voodoo ceremony on Saturday in a Catholic or Roman uh, Protestant Catholic service, Christian service on Sunday because they're desperately looking for angles, options, and so it's very syncretistic in the country. It's one thing to try to work in a community with Protestant and Catholic leaders, and I've tried that the first time I lived there for 12 years. It's a very different thing to come into a community which the average community is made up of 80% voodooists and come into that community and say to those leaders, we would like to talk to you, the voodooist leader, about developing your community. Some of the most exciting and interesting adventures I've had in these last five years have been working with these voodooists. So you pull all three of those religious sectors together, Protestant, Roman Catholic, and Voodooist, and you say, in the history of this community, has there ever been one time that you've ever tried to do one thing together? And the answer every single time has been no. In fact, the question is ludicrous even to bring up. Why would we work together? We've never even, we don't even like each other. You don't understand the divisions that we have, historical centuries, literally, of divisions. And to bring them together is a challenge. But that's where we're headed. The third group, we'll call them local associations. These are, these are similar in our culture here in America to Kiwanis, Rotarian, that kind of thing, Lions Club. Um, they're, they're just everything. You, anything that's it's at the heart of the community, its vision, its dream, there will be an association already established. Youth associations on the good side, you know, running uh, football, soccer leagues, that kind of thing. On the downside, hiring themselves out to the highest bidder to demonstrate against or for the, the newest and greatest government initiative or NGO thing that's coming to their community. So you have all of these youth leagues, you have women's groups, you have various kinds of associations. Sometimes when you go to a community in Haiti, you feel like there's more associations than there are people. In fact, the first one we organized there were over 350 representatives from 63 different associations in one community. So you can't obviously overlook that section. The fourth and final part of this piece are the local leaders in any Haitian community. And this is a piece we, we can't overlook. There are those incredibly gifted young people, these Haitian young people that one way or another, have made it out of the community and into the lifestyle that all of us would understand, the emerging elusive middle class. They don't live any longer in their community. There are many of them in another place uh, where we work. Many of them are in the Dominican Republic. They live and work across the border. But also, they're all around the world. They're found everywhere. And in my four decades of association with Haitians, I find them everywhere, including Kansas City. I find them doctors, lawyers. Um, I find university professors at KU. I find them at Sprint, middle management and up. So they break the stereotype in terms of what maybe you were thinking about in terms of a Haitian and what you maybe have thought you understood about Haiti. But these people, 
these best and the brightest, these local leaders, were encouraging with actually quite a, a good success rate of re-engaging them back into the communities from which they came. So we have these four components, and then we developed, or are developing, this thing that I just kind of blurted out one day, because I didn't really know what to call it. I said, what we need are fully integrated and functioning community federations. That's been almost five years ago, and I'm still looking for a better way to say that, but it basically captures what we're talking about. Fully integrated into the community, functioning, and then the federation. There is a legal vehicle in Haiti. Um, it's very similar. It's called a federation, legally, in French, and it, it's very similar to a 501c3 uh, nonprofit for this country. And this is the vehicle through which we're forming these federations, over two dozen so far successful federations, actually a little more than that now. And they're made up, um, the reason they're different uh, than the average federation is they're made up of all four of the groups that are on your board here. The local governments, I mentioned, the, all the religious leaders that want to be involved because all, all are being welcomed. And then serious representation from the local associations and then the local leaders that I mentioned. So we've pulled these together um, really all over the country. Um, got a map here. There we go. You see the little pins, Port-au-Prince up at the center of the map and down on the bottom over to our right, those yellow pins over there are really where I'm going to talk about. We work with Church of the Resurrection just off the map on the left and some other groups up in Laogon. But I want to talk about what we're doing down in the southeast corner where those pins are. Those are where our clinics are, but without exception, we do have uh, federations in all of those areas. Two years ago, UNICEF, that's a part of the United Nations, contacted Heart to Heart in Haiti, and they offered us a very interesting um, idea, a challenge, if you will. They told us about a program that they call Cori Fami, which is Creole for helping or building families. And they asked us if we would take, Heart to Heart would take the lead in this program in the southeast section of the country. Uh, the funding comes from FIES, which is the Economic and Social Fund of the Government of Haiti, from the World Bank and through United Nations to Heart to Heart. And they moved Heart to Heart at that point uh, into a full partner, from a non-government organization to a full partner. And we took charge of this, and they formed an organization called... Um, it's an interesting name, Technical Committee, doesn't sound very exciting, but it's, it is pretty exciting to be in these meetings, Southeast Department Technical Committee, made up of all 18 of the government ministries of Haiti, UNICEF, and then Little Old Heart to Heart, of which we chair. <laughs> it's uh, a challenge if you want to, uh, Robert's Rules of Order, it doesn't really apply in those meetings, believe me. But it's quite an adventure. We... The challenge was this. They said, in these three areas, Ansipit, I showed you on the map, the little pins, the little communes, uh, Ansipit, Chote, and Grand Gossier, we'd like to try this experiment. Cori Fami has failed every time we tried it in Haiti, along with tens of thousands of other failures. And so the experiment is this. If we insert the federation into Cori Fami and try it where it's never been tried before, mainly down in the southeast, let's see if it'll work. That was the deal. We said yes. Two years into it, it is working. I can stand here today and get really excited about this. Total population, 78,377, made up of 17,813 families. The reason I know those numbers is we've talked to every single one of those people in the last two years. So this approach towards sustainability is pretty exciting. The objectives you can see there, they fit very nicely into the uh, traditional objectives of Heart to Heart in terms of health care. They also fit into the more aggressive and broad objectives of Heart to Heart in Haiti, which include not only health care, but education, leadership development, and wealth creation. So these, uh, these components fit very, very nicely. So we added the federation, a very simple diagram. Something was missing in all the times they'd tried this between the government of Haiti, and then the local people. And that missing piece was the federation made up of all the people that I mentioned to you at the communal section level, the government, the religious leaders, the associations, and the best and the brightest. Insert them, and then hire what they call an ACP, or what we would call in, um, in, in English, a social worker. 
You hire these people, and then you begin to develop Cori Fami. Now, on the, what time I have left, just briefly hit on what it is. It's a five-phase program, officially three phases, which are already done, and then four and five are just my way of describing it. Phase one was a GPS mapping survey of all existing social services. You can see them there. Uh, in all ten of the communes in the Southeast Department, I mentioned we're working in three, but we did it in all ten. The interesting thing was the survey didn't take very long in the three areas where we're working because there weren't any, virtually no social services or economic programs underway, so it didn't take very long. Phase two was a social economic household survey. That's where we went into every home, those 17,813 households, and talk to them about their dreams, about their needs. We had five teams of five people, so 25 people did these two surveys. We're finished. We've got a wealth of data that's just unbelievably benefiting us and the, the government and all the people I mentioned, our partners. The most recent data prior to those surveys was done 14 years ago, and it was very incomplete. So, for, for instance, in one section, the population was listed as 1,703, when we went there, we found 15,500 and some. So it wasn't very accurate. So we've updated the data. Phase three is where we are now, uh, October 2014. So what we're doing as we speak is connecting those 17,813 households with existing and growing social services. We've hired 203 people to do this project. They're in French, uh, translated multidisciplinary community agents. As I mentioned in English, you could call them social workers. They will, these people, these 178 people, will spend the next six years in training. And they will begin year one. They're involved already in uh, learning how to be uh, what we would call health agents, uh, being trained by the government of Haiti. That's year one. Through the next five years, they will move into a series of training which will make them a complete package, if you will, a person, each of them, charged with connecting 100 families with the social services, the job creation activities that are ongoing, which didn't exist, but yet now are beginning to exist and over the next six years will grow. Clinics are being built, agricultural projects are being developed, wealth creation is coming. Uh, groups that are there with us are USAID now, European Union, a whole wealth of entrepreneur in, uh, uh, groups and individuals from all over the world, the latest from Cape Town, South Africa, which is a fascinating story in itself. Phases four and five are just my way of describing where we're headed because this is supposed to be a discussion about sustainability. Well, interestingly enough, the government of Haiti has agreed in writing to pick up the total program at the year 2019, at the end of the six years of the World Bank funding bring all of these people on board as government uh, social workers and pay their salaries. And then what is most exciting of all for us is what I'm calling phase five, and that is they also want to expand this into the entire country. So we're starting with this little pilot in three communes, 78,000 people, already started in number four, and then we've been asked to go into five more communes. So it is potentially a march to 140 communes covering the entire country. So of all the things I've ever done in Haiti over these last four decades, this is by far the biggest, and also I think probably the most exciting when it talks about sustainability. Thank you.